Well, here we are again, folks. Um, I've been up and down the country trying to, uh, running workshops, trying to get people to understand that to get rid of uh, uh, any presentments that come our way, it's very, very simple. And the way that I've always done it is with a letter, because a piece of paper is actually your court, guys. So once you learn how to write letters, you will find that it is very simple. Okay, so today we're going to be going through uh, several things in line with that. The first one is going to be the subject matter. Uh, whenever we get a letter sent to us, there will be subject matter. We've got to address who we're sending it to and what to avoid and how to respond. And finally, the recontract. So we'll go through uh, over all of these subjects and um, through, throughout the workshops I've been showing people the easy and simple way to do this. So hopefully this works for you. So let's address what the subject matter. Everything between here and here is the subject matter. Okay, so there's only two parts to that that are not subject matter, and that's the name at the top, Catherine, and the name at the bottom, Wilma. Everything else is the subject matter. So we're not going to concern ourselves with the subject matter because very shortly you will realize why. But if you remember the hierarchy of law, God, man, and corporations. God created man, man crea created corporations. As long as you know that, you're going to know what your standing is or your status is. So if a corporation is writing to a man, who has the highest standing? Naturally, we do. Corporations are only pieces of paper and they need an agent to act for them. So once we know those simple things, like the tortoise and the matrix, agents have no rights. They need to get us into contract in order for them to proceed. But if they get us into contract, remember that we are the principal. So we'll look at the New Zealand Law Dictionary here now, and it says principal. Highest in rank, authority, authority or character. Okay, so the principal is always higher than the agent. The principal instructs the agent. So if we want things to go away, it's very, very simple by establishing our status. So first of all, we're going to find out who to respond to. Governments, government agency are, government agencies are only administrating our trusts and they use agents to administer our trust. If the agents get us into contract, then they get a commission by making money for the trust. But they use little tricks to get us into contract as they want us to address the subject matter. And most of the time the people fall for that. But if you realize that it's only a fishing expedition to see how we respond and knowing how we respond will avoid any so-called claim that they have against us. Now, here's one of the tricks they use. They use a computer called Sally or Bob to generate a letter. So um, someone will walk past a computer and say, generate letters. The computer will spit out a load of letters. And those letters will come to you and me. They wait for us to argue, agree, or go silent. Any one of those three things is an automatic contract. If we argue, we're dishonoring their presentment. If we agree, we get our wallet out and pay the fees. If we, if we pay the fees, we've made they have made money for the trust and they get a commission for it. Or if we go silent, once again, we have dishonored their presentment. So we're, we're not going to do that. We're going to respond to to them in a, in a correct manner. So phone the letter writer and you will find, you will find that they will say, oh, that person's not in at the moment. May I help you? And you must say, no, is the let, letter writer a real person or a computer? Now that will embarrass the living daylights out of them. But every government department has computers named Bob, Sally, Joe, whatever. 
So if, if they're not going to give you that, look up the government department, government agency online and find the CEO or the CFO. Now, the uh, once you find the CFO, go to their LinkedIn address and see if they really are the person. Okay, and then we address the letter to them. So let's start the letter. The beginning of the letter will start off with the date and our name, John Henry, 21 Jump Street, and we'll address it as Bob acting as government official. It could be in Land Revenue or any other of the myriad ABC agencies of the government. Now the opening sentence will be plain and simple. We're going to acknowledge that we received something from them and say and we don't understand them. So today, the 1st of April 2022, we received a notice of court fine which we do not understand. Okay, now we're telling them straight off, we don't stand under you, buddy. Okay, but the second sentence is the one that's going to give us jurisdiction. To clarify the situation would, oh, sorry, is going to give us judgment. Uh, to clarify the situation, would Bob kindly respond to the following questions to above within 14 days with the stipulation, right? We'll stop and look at that word because that's an important word. An agreement between attorneys that concerns business before a court and is designed to simplify or shorten the litigation and save costs. Courts look with favour on stipulations because they save time and simplify the matters which must be resolved. Okay, stipulations are voluntary, but it's an agreement between two parties. Very important word, an agreement between two parties. Okay, the second part, the stipulation that Bob's non-response, they cannot respond to the questions we're going to ask them shortly, will be accepted as silent acquiescent admission. Okay, so acquiescence from the New Zealand Law Dictionary 8th edition Consent, either express or implied, okay? Consent is given by acquiescence. So acquiescence and admission, a confession or acknowledgement. Admission of facts is a voluntary acknowledgement made by a party to a proceeding. So you can see that those three words that I've written there, stipulation and silent acquiescent admission, will give us the judgment after we have asked the following questions. So this is how we establish our status simply by asking two questions. Is Bob an agent of the Crown? If he's an agent of the Crown, that makes us the principal. Now we've established it, we further ask him, is Bob sworn to uphold statute? He is and therefore Whatever statute we point him to, he must uphold it. So we're going to, now that we've established our status, we will point to the statute that we're asking Bob to uphold. And it's very simple. Three more questions and it's all over, Rover. Is Bob sworn to uphold the Crimes Act 1961? Of course he is. Is Bob in breach of Section 240 of the Crimes Act 1961? So let's have a look at Section 240 of the Crimes Act. Now I'll just give you the basic outline here and you can pause the video and go through it yourselves. Obtaining by deception or causing loss by deception. Everyone is guilty of obtaining by deception or causing loss by deception who by any deception and without claim of right does any of the following. In this section, deception means a false representation with oral, documentary, or by conduct. Okay, so feel free to pause the video and go through that and give yourself a good understanding of what deception they're trying to pull on us. So he's in breach of Section 240 of the Crimes Act. So if he's in breach, now we only need one more question to discharge the whole thing. Should this not be treated as discharged under Section 40 of the Contract and Commercial Law Act? This is how simple it is, folks. This section here throws the whole thing out. Sections 36 to 39 have effect in place of the rules of the common law 
and of equity governing the circumstances in which a party to a contract may rescind it or treat it as discharge for misrepresentation. So by coming in and addressing us as the surname, they are misrepresenting our character. Our, our given names are the only names that we were given. The government gave us a surname, okay, so they are misrepresenting, and this is the end of the matter. But we're going to go a little bit further and give them notice. Notice, we believe that this is a fraudulent claim for unjust enrichment as there does not appear to be a sworn affidavit to substantiate the charge and do not believe that there is sufficient evidence to satisfy all elements of the charge or a plaintiff willing to take the stand and testify to the veracity of the charge. If they did, they would also have to disclose that they get in the secret commissions, which is illegal under the Secret Commissions Act 1910, Section 5. Okay, so, I mean, we've got them in more than one area. So, they like to hide behind their office, so we need to pull Bob out of his office and say, with a further notice, this is the second paragraph of the notice, any further attempt by Bob to extort money will require a letter signed by Bob in his private capacity. Now we've taken him out of his office and put him under his own full commercial liability in order for us to address full accountability and seek legal recourse under the Fair Trading Act 1986, Section 21C and Section 23. Okay, he's gone now, totally gone. Okay, and the final part or the final sentence is, in the interim, this is a cease and desist order until this matter is finalized. Now, once again, we're going to give them a stipulation or an agreement that any further contact will invoke the fees contained in our schedule. See attached. So you put your fee schedule on the back of the letter and send it to them. And if they try to recontract us because we have addressed someone else um, other, other than the living being, they will get someone else to write to us. And so all we need to do is a letter to uh, write back to them without addressing the subject matter but just saying to them, as we wrote to Bob, we do not understand why Deputy Dork has replied to us in a puerile attempt to obfuscate the facts and recontract us. That should put an end to any further recontracting. And folks, that is it.